immediately. Now, we're going to Bob Chapman. I want his take on uh, this first because it's something I covered in the first hour, but I want to get his take on it. We're going to go back to your calls as well. <laughs> Bob Chapman, former intelligence officer, um, biggest private silver and gold broker, uh, helped do the Gary Allen report. Now his son, of course, runs Politico, Gary Allen's son. Uh, but a preeminent guy fighting tyranny for 50 years and has had to, of course, leave the United States due to harassment so he can live to fight another day. Joining us from an undisclosed location, joining us here in a moment. But President Obama's Executive Order 13575 creates rural councils. And, and so you won't believe me two weeks ago when I talked about this or 16 years ago when I talked about Agenda 21. Even though I'm going under it in Austin, doubling the power prices, raping everything, home inspections, total harassment, big globalist groups, above the law, giving waivers. But it's happening. But, but here's Ronald Reagan in 64, in 64, talking about what the Agriculture Department was trying to do then. And the Agriculture Department's statement is, get big or get out. Their policy is to shut down small farms. Uh, they have the premises ID, the animal ID. Uh, they, have the, uh, they tried to pass the Safe, Food Safety Act because big pharma owned big agra is always, it's a big combine, they're all merged. They have 17 million in one week last November to try to pass that to openly shut down all the small farms and ranches with incredible, you know, $10 in regulation with chips, tags on a $5 chicken. Just total bankruptcy. But then Tyson and the rest are exempt. That's just one example. Just the end of it all. Now, the IRS already doesn't let you ride off your hobby farm. You, know, you keep a family farm, a family ranch. You try to run cattle to get the state tax exemption because you couldn't pay it if it wasn't there with the property tax. And then you run the cattle, you pretty much lose money having them, but you got to have them there to be able to have the tax exempt. And they come in now to my family and they say, you're not getting that. You're not, you don't get to, you know, it's a hobby. It's got to be profitable or you're out. But then you just, oh, it's incredible. Most small farms and ranches, they work at the feed store or they work at the prison or they work at the power company or they work, you know, you know delivering mail on a route. I know all the, or, they, or they're truck drivers and then they take care of their cows and they get home at seven o'clock at night or they take care of their sheep or their crops. It's all over. And they're going to have the receivership arm come in with federal help so they can have the federal busybodies there to organize and con everybody. And don't worry, America's going down. You wanted America, you want tyranny, you're getting it. Here's Ronald Reagan talking about it. You'll find that they've also asked for the right to imprison farmers who wouldn't keep books as prescribed by the federal government. The Secretary of Agriculture asked for the right to seize farms through condemnation and resell them to other individuals. And contained in that same program was a provision that would have allowed the federal government to remove two million farmers from the soil. If you live in the heartland of America, you have to listen up. While the nation was distracted with the Anthony Weiner drama, President Obama signed an executive order that will seize greater power over food, fiber, and energy okay, I'm in gonna our stop right there. countryside area. And they go over the executive order. Homeland Security, spy brigades, uh, local uh, Homeland Security offices, Department of Defense offices, they're going to help you. Meanwhile, the rest of the story find my stack here it is the rest of the story breaks down that they during the winter let all these highland lakes mountain lakes where all these major floods are having as change their policy flood everyone they let it build up and then knowing the snow melt would come and releasing it all at once uh and they are openly trying to force folks off their land i read this in the first hour and bragging uh that it's good to get people off of their land and so now they're not fixing the dams, they're, they're, they're not building ones, they're tearing them down, but they use the existing dams to build it up and then flood you. And, and they were advised on this, they knew it was coming, and now they're going to take the property. Uh, Bob Chapman, I tell you, it is just getting crazier and crazier. You wrote about Agenda 21 back in 1992 when they first rammed it through, and Maury Strong said, we're going to bankrupt the West, that is our goal, and that is their goal, and the average person just can't admit it's this bad. You're absolutely correct, and uh, uh, it's been an evolving process, uh, something that's been very subtle, um, didn't show its head the way it has until just recently. Um, reminds me of 666, the um, agglomeration of, of cities into regions, and, and uh, that's coming next, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, that was written about 50 years ago. 
And so these people got a lot of patience, and um, they're putting into uh, operation what they want to put in. It, it reminds me of the years between 1934 and, and uh, 1939 in Germany. They did all these kinds of things, but today they're so much more advanced than they were then. Um, that was a uh, experiment learning curve. I, I firmly believe that uh, the uh, situation that existed and was financed the way it was in Germany during the 1930s and before that actually uh, was a trial run for what we're seeing today. And in proof of that, you look at the uh, amalgamation of Western and Eastern Germany uh, some 15 years ago, and you'll see that all of the people who were involved in spying on both sides and the Stasi were never prosecuted for anything. It was incredible. I mean, intelligence organizations spent years and years spying on the Russians and the East Germans and for the same kinds of things. And if you remember, Alex, uh, it wasn't all that long ago, then they had Marcus Wolf and some of the other people who were involved uh, in Stasi and in the KGB in America uh, with the State Department uh, and they were under contract to teach Americans in that Americans in that sphere how to do that and how to set up spying systems, which you've mentioned. Well, Bob, we're going to break, but I mean, this is so diabolical. He sets up Bush starts. Obama continues the ten governor council so he can ignore the states under fema has 10 kept minion governors that now run the 10 regions they set up as they've done in other countries this rural affairs office where they admit now you're going to have the department of defense and the feds running around in your cornfields i mean uh, stay there bob it, it it is so hellish people have no idea how much trouble we are in. We are being occupied just like Iraq or Libya or any of these countries. Planet.com forum. And I, you've got all these world leaders calling for it. But I did find the Australian prime minister calling for global government. And then they've got the green parties. When you click on it, greens.org.au. I'm going to get Watson or Kerr, somebody do an article on this. It says global governance, and it's got the path to world government. Uh, it's got how great the International Criminal Court is, how great the UN is, that all nations must accept the criminal court and the UN invasion armies for peace. I mean, this is, they come in, they fund a group to uprise, and then the UN invades you. And it's, it's all happening, and of course they put Obama in and gave him a peace prize. That's all part of the joke. It's all part of the, it is peace. That's what Obama keeps saying. He said in his speech a couple days ago, we played the clip yesterday. He said, I don't need to talk to Congress. This isn't war. This is peace. I mean, he actually said that. He said, this is peace. This is peace. Bob Chapman, they are just, it's happening. The world government's here. Well, they're going forward like it was here, and they want it to be here, and they're making it be here, and uh, all the earmarks are there. And, uh, you know, Australia has been one of the leading places uh, obeying the orders of the New World Order, uh, which is rather su uh, su surprising. I didn't think that they, in years past, would be, but they are. Um, we carry a, an Australian section in our international forecaster. We have a lot of news coming out of there. We have several good sources there. And they've got some uh, pretty good uh, uh, coverage through the media there uh, that you are still be able to pick something up uh, that's useful. But um, we're going to see this all over the world. It, it's part of a larger plan. And... Uh, they're ready to go on it, and they're pushing it. And they, the people who are involved, are coming right out and saying, yes, we have to have a new world order. And you're going to hear more and more of them. Uh, they're trying to condition you to think that maybe that's good and, and it's better than being unemployed. But then I still even go on mainline Republican shows 
and they still go, you're a conspiracy terrorist, you believe there's a group setting up world government, and they're like all over the news saying that's the answer to everything, but even some mainline conservative talk show hosts still can't wake up because they remember the 30 years past where you're not supposed to talk about it because it doesn't exist. So as the, I mean, it's like somebody who's been told, trains don't exist, trains don't exist. If you ever see one coming at you, it's imaginary, you're schizophrenic. And so somebody sees a train coming, they just walk out in front of it, and it's like, nah, nah, it's going 70 miles an hour, it's rumbling, they're honking, they're trying to slam their brakes on, and you're just going, it's not a train, it's not a train. I mean, this is mind control. Absolutely, mind control. And uh, in its present form, uh, it's been refined greatly. The major media uses it all the time. That's why so many of these people get hooked and then they get sucked in and then they get indoctrinated. And then when we get a hold of them and tell them the truth, they say, gee, that can't be true. I mean, I didn't see that anyplace else. Are, are you sure? And as you well know, Alex, that's the kind of thing we have to put up with. And uh, this <coughs> Facebook thing uh, with the young man, and uh, that's probably going to <coughs> spread all over the world, uh, that kind of uh, apprehension because you said what they figure is the wrong thing. Uh, that's going to become more prevalent. It'll be a way of uh, scaring people into not talking about anything. It's getting insane. Uh, what about Dominique Strauss-Kahn? The New York Times, they've released him uh, from even uh, home detention. They say they may drop the charges, that she's reportedly uh, mafia-connected, and they admit that Sarkozy had intelligence people there in the building. Well, you and I talked about this as it happened, and we said that's probably what did happen. And as we find out, it is what happened. The question is, what are they going to do with this person, this lady, uh, who made the false ac ac accusations? And is she uh, being interrogated as to why she did what she did? And if she was directed to do so, who directed her? It's a good question. Well, I've said it, uh, you know, Whitey Bulger, uh, now that he's about to supposedly expose all the feds that ran him, he might fall down a flight of stairs or hit his head. And this lady, uh, you know, I, boy, I, she might end up like uh, some of those Clinton people. Remember McDougal dying up in the uh, jail cell in Dallas? That's right. And, 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 and of course, the, the one that, whose body was found there in Washington, out on the lawn. Yeah, he had the bullet hole in his head with no blood at the scene. Uh, Vince Foster. <laughs> we'll be right. I remember a few weeks ago, uh, um, a bunch of national media and, of course, Red State and all these sites attacked us saying we were insane conspiracy theorists uh, for uh, even questioning that Rick Perry went to Bilderberg or that he would end up being the front runner for president or that he was even running. I mean, that th to be able to think... And to have sources inside the governor's operation, to have other sources around the country, including national media, to know that he gave a pledge he wouldn't run for president in 2012, for 2012, and that, he, uh, that we told you he would break the pledge because it was never a pledge. It's not like he's changing his mind. It was always his intention. This is Al Gore's former chief of staff in his campaign in Texas. This is for president. This is, this is a guy Karl Rove got to flip to Republican. This is a guy that's for forced inoculations, on record, the only governor to publicly push it. Uh, this is a guy uh, who's for uh, open borders in the past and been given awards by Vicente Fox for Sanctuary City. And you notice the Sanctuary City bill died. He, he introduces bills to kill them. It, it's, it, and Ron Paul agreed that's the tactic. So, uh, but it doesn't matter. People like to be con, so, hey, I understand. Uh, it's fun. Uh, Romney leads national poll, but Perry debuts in second place. And this is out of real clear politics. Well, they already had polls showing he was in the second place. Uh, and depending on the poll, it's Ron Paul's number one, number two, or number three. And Rick Perry now talks and acts like Ron Paul, but he doesn't actually do what Ron Paul did. What do you make of this, Bob Chapman, that the mainline Republican sites are, 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 are very upset 
and even chastised the Drudge Report for linking to our stories two weeks ago that 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 we would dare to say that that Rick Perry was going to run for president, even though we are a real media organization who has real sources. Well, I think uh, what they're trying to do here, uh, and this will be done in perpetuity, and that is to uh, discourage any outside opinion. And that's what yours is. It's outside the box. Opinion is now conspiracy theory or breaking news. I mean, if I can say this keyboard is gray, that's a conspiracy theory. I'm not allowed to have any view. Well, I, you know, my feeling on that is let them talk all they want. We just keep on doing what we're doing. And, uh, but I, I see a lot of harassment today, uh, particularly of people like yourself. Uh, and this is part of it of this vilification so that people will start to wonder, well, really is Alex and Bob, were, uh, are they that way? Uh, are they conspiracy theorists and really off base? And this is the tack that they're following. And you'll get all of these bogus attacks making up stories about what we're talking about just simply isn't true. And it's going to go on and on. And you in the past, like myself, we just ignore it. We talked about this a dozen years ago. No, that's why, they're, today, that's why they're losing today, credibility. Worse. Exactly. They're losing credibility because they don't live in the real world, but they, they get more and more ridiculous, uh, is my point, that that's major breaking news that we've got sources that Perry is going to run for president. We've been saying it for th almost four years on record. It's in my film Endgame. And then the system is so upset by our credibility that they flip it around and say we don't have credibility. So the debate is about do we have credibility or not instead of the facts that we're laying out to people. It's a mind trick. They are terrified. And a few weeks ago, you made the statement... We are breathing down their collar, and they don't like it. And you're absolutely correct. And the the greater the breathing is or the heat down their collar, uh, the more uh, aggressive they're going to get. And, you know, when you were talking about the attack on this young man in Australia, I was thinking of this word, uh, word usage, and, of course, you and I, uh, use all kinds of word usage, and uh, that's probably how they're going to come at us. Uh, you said something about something, then you can't say that, so we're going to put you, pick you up, and put you in jail. Well, they already do that in uh, Canada. I mean, I mean, this is modern book burning. This is like arresting you as a heretic. Uh, you know, if you're uh, Copernicus and and don't think the Earth is flat, or or if you're Galileo and 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 you know know that the Earth orbits the Sun, they just arrest you. I mean, it's right back to what it's always been. Well, when the Vatican was running things, they excommunicated you. And uh, many of the great minds of history have were uh, excommunicated. So uh, it, it's nothing new. It goes back for centuries. But I think they're getting it down to a fine art and then putting a zinger, a stinger in there, which is, you know, if you say that sort of thing about somebody like uh, that policeman is uh, a homosexual, uh, then uh, off you go, you get tried, and you get put away for three or four years where you will be indoctrinated, and uh, it's just like the communists had in their camps recently. And, well, no, know, that's what the communists said. They said, you're saying things we don't like, you're going to a re-education camp. I mean, that's these are re-education, and our people are listening right now going, good, it was mean to say that, re-education camp, re-education camp. I mean, it, it, it shows how much trouble we're in. It, it's very, very serious, and sometimes you can't even convince your close friends and members of your family that it's as dire as it is. Uh, they, they just don't see it, and, and everybody, out of everybody, only a fraction will ever see it because their minds just don't work that way where they can uncover things like this and see through them. Uh, it it takes a special kind of approach and most people don't have that all right i want to go to some calls bob but there's a lot of other news uh floating around right now the russian um minister uh russian envoy to nato says yeah they're getting ready to go in september october 
we, we had Tarpley on live uh, and, and showed live video of what conservatively looked like a half million people running around with AK-47s and grenade launchers in the middle of Tripoli, men, women, children, hopping up and down, uh, saying, we're ready, you know, we, we want peace, but, it, but if the tanks come, we're going to fight. I mean, Saddam was a dictator installed by the West, and, you know, he'd have little staged events with a few thousand of his hand-picked people with guns to show, look, I'm on a dictator. No, this was half million people in one square with automatic rifles and grenade launchers saying, bring it on. And uh, hey, the banker, the bankers are going to bring it on. They don't care if they march our army and marine people in there and they get killed. Well, that's absolutely correct. And they're pulling troops out of uh, Afghanistan right now to send them over to Libya. And uh, I get a lot of questions on that yesterday, and uh, you know, from the Marine disposition. And and you know, it, it's a you know, these are professional people. Uh, in in our military, they don't want to go and do these things, but they're under contract and they don't have much choice. They argue, they get court-martialed. Then they go to jail, so what good is that? So they go and put themselves in the line of fire into something that they totally and completely disagree with. Now, let's look at the economy. More and more, you know, the, the, the Financial Times of London on Monday, the, the dollar will, will lose its world reserve status, but they say 25 years to introduce the idea to us. The Chinese say the dollar is already dead as a world reserve, but the other currencies are falling. Uh, Greece has rolled over to the austerity. Break down the current economic geopolitical uh, landscape. Well, one of the factors uh, that we have to talk about when we talk about the dollar uh, and it's, it's a very important. In the last 11 years, every year, nine major currencies fell on average more than 20% versus gold and silver. So if the dollar goes down against the, the pound or the euro or any currency, it's important. But what's really important is all of the currencies are going down in varying degrees versus gold and silver. And that's extremely important. People don't look at it that way. They don't understand because no one ever tells them. But versus other currencies, you've just seen the dollar back off into 74.5 approximately. Uh, the USDX index, which is six major uh, currencies versus the dollar. And that's really not going to get any better even though England and the countries in Europe and many other countries got similar problems. The government in the United States has seen fit, along with the Federal Reserve, to so overburden the American economy and the dollar with this tremendous debt that there's no way that the dollar can appreciate. It's going to continue to depreciate. And that's the bag that we're into. And unless something is done to stop that, which is more than anything else speculation by Wall Street, uh, it's going to continue. And I think that they want it to continue because they want to be able to pay off their debts with cheaper money. And this is what they're up to. And we see them, uh, as you said, every time they want a new, quote, bailout, which is really just another robbery. Every time that happens, we see another news article. Oh, ratings agency, you has to lose its, uh, lose its credit rating you know, if you don't give the bankers more money. Uh, so it's just, it's just endless. I mean, just they're not going to stop. Well, a good example of that is what you and I and Max have just seen over uh, in Greece. And uh, everybody knows what's happened there. Uh, what I'm terribly afraid of now is this could very well lead to violence and revolution in Greece. And I think there's a distinct possibility of that. We have a lot of subscribers here who are connected, and they tell us that it could very well happen. So we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. But uh, that sort of thing, if it happened in Greece, would spread all over Europe and to the United States. Your phone's crackling a bit, Bob, but you're... Uh, yeah, I know. We got the big storms in my area. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to G2 in Illinois. G2, welcome. 
Welcome. Uh, uh, Bob, I want to throw you a couple of powder pops because uh, my uh, female hormones are up. I've been uh, drinking lake water out of plastic bottles. Number one, you mentioned Greece. Those demonstrators, you can go on the Internet. Uh, they are uh, agent provocateurs, and that was sham opposition in Greece. Check it out. Second big story. Well, hold on, G2, because you're making these big statements. You're talking about bisphenol A, admittedly uh, turning uh, all mammal species, males, quote, feminine. Then the mice uh, uh, release a pheromone that they're feminine, and then the females won't mate with them. And people need to understand it's in all the major printer cartridge ink, all the major brands, most of the printer ink at the store. Uh, it, it's in most of the plastic we drink out of. Okay, A, okay, serious issue. B, uh, they've had millions of people on the streets of Greece. Yes, the police have been caught breaking out windows and setting fires to things, even on mainline Greece television. Are you saying all the protesters uh, were uh, agent provocateurs? No, but it's it's on the Internet, and they, Greek TV's got them because they let away some guys with a tattoo. One of them had a left tattoo on his left uh, for, um No, I, I understand, they're, they're, but I mean, what's your view of the austerity? What's your view of what happened to Greece? Well, um, you're talking about Sinn Bet against Sinn Féin, and you're talking about uh, the uh, GF2, the Gaza Flotilla 2. They just had sabotage down there. Um, there's some Irish ship. It's called Sawarza. It's Gaelic for freedom. It, the drive shaft was cut, and the rudder was cut off. And, and then this followed Monday, Tuesday, days after the sabotage of the Juliana in Peraus Harbor, Athens, Greece, where the propeller and the drive shaft were cut up. Um, the Irish uh, ship uh, group leader, Fintan uh, Lane, supported by Prime Minister Ed, Edna Kenny. Okay, okay, let me, l l let me get Bob Chapman to comment on that. Thank you, G2. Haven't uh, heard from you in a while. Uh, let's, uh, Bob, your comments on what he was saying. Well, first of all, uh, the actions happened uh, versus those uh, uh, ships. And uh, who is the likely su suspects? Uh, the Israelis, because they don't want a flotilla. Although this, to me, has very little to do with Greece other than I think there was one ship there and um, a little hazy on what happened uh, with it. Uh, I, I don't know whether it was off Piraeus or where it was. But... I, I don't know that one thing belongs to the other or has anything to do with the other. Um, there's, no, there's no question. The sabotage uh, with the flotilla that's going to Gaza, and they had to take off uh, minus one or two or three vessels. And uh, that's just simply dirty tricks. And the Israelis are well known for that. Um, as far as Greece is concerned, agent provocateurs, you're always going to have them. And that's just the way governments work today. But there's tremendous amounts of people. Uh, you and I both have many videos of what's gone on there over the last uh, almost a month now. And uh, I have people who are subscribers who live there. And they're very successful, some of them. Uh, some of them are middle class. And everybody knows everybody in Greece. It's a small country. And uh, generally speaking, and so uh, I think that 99% of what you're seeing in the streets by protesters is real. Absolutely, I mean, let's uh, really disturbed, and I, I don't blame them. Absolutely, P uh, Pamela in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Welcome. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good. Uh, I'm glad we're all awake, and I just want to let the good news that Jesus Christ Yahweh is in Australia. You can find him at YouTube, Brian is Yahweh, too. Pamela, Brian is Pamela, Yahweh. get to, come on, come on. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Do you have any questions or comments for Bob? Well, it's the seeds of Seth and the Lord love us, Susan Cain, to have a truth right now. We're trying to save uh, our I country. appreciate your call. I'm not going to do it. I think we got some prank calls today. John in New Jersey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, Alex? What's Good. You, man? Thanks for everything you do, your guests, your, your staff there. You know, thank goodness there's people like you in the world. Um, listen, I sent a couple emails, and uh, there's a, a couple things that I want to say. Um, the first one I sent is I was trying to figure out exactly how much government costs us in this country. Um, now, from It depends on I your tax bracket, but most people, one way or the other, pay about 60% in taxes and studies I've seen. Bob Chapman? That's about right. And what, in and, France, uh, it's over 85, correct? 
it, it depends upon where you live within the United States, but uh, California, where I lived for years, is terrible. Stay there, uh, stay there, John. Heights. Stay there, John. Stay there, Bob. We'll come back, let you finish your question, and then let Bob finish his answer. But yeah, it varies, but they've got global gauges. They call the U.S. a tax avoidance area because we only pay 60% in some form of tax. France is the mall at over 85. As the greedily uh, Bob Chapman's our guest. I want to get to all these people, but we were talking to John uh, in New Jersey, and he was talking about what percentage we pay in taxes. If you really get down to it, businesses, everything passes on the cost to you, but then you have all the fines, the fees, the regulations, the property taxes, the business taxes. And uh, even if you're, you know, quote, blue collar and making, you know, a lot less money than some folks, uh, you're hit the worst because all the expenses of what you buy, you know, people that have more money than you and their businesses are passing the expenses uh, on to you. But uh, again, uh, their problem in, in all their public documents is a, quote, overheating economy. Things growing fast. They, they don't like that. This is a command destruction economy. And I want Bob to comment on this. But it's, I mean, th th they constantly talk about this for 100 years where they're taxing to suck money out of the economy, to slow things down, and then giving waivers to insiders so only they can operate with an unfair trade advantage. And the examples of that are legion, but the big one is 2,000 plus companies that give to Obama, get healthcare waivers, and now no one can compete with them. They can lower prices, and it's whether it's a hamburger or a car, and no one can defeat them. They're just, it's total criminal mafia operations. Bob Chapman. Well, it's the same as the uh, situation with the profits of offshore corporations uh, that are American corporations, uh, you can make money, keep it offshore. Five years ago, we had legislation. Uh, the promise was that these transnational conglomerates would uh, hire people in America if they could bring money back. And they were allowed to bring money back to about $350 billion. And instead of paying 35% taxes, they paid five and a quarter percent. They want the same deal again. This time they want to bring back two trillion. What did they do with the money last time? They went in the market, bought their own stocks, ran up the prices, and cashed in on their options. Does that answer your question, uh, John? Um, yeah, well, some good information. Um, you know, I found a wiki page. I think that probably has the best information. Um, it's from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and they, they're, they're up over 72% of uh, GDP, excluding the debt. Um, now, you know, we have a unique opportunity right now, and the only solution that I could think of that I want to tell all your... No, listeners. I'm going to interrupt you. 72% in taxes, because I know conservatively 60, but yeah, a lot of estimates have France above 90. I wanted to be conservative because folks won't believe it. If I lie in any way, it's that I tend to go with the most conservative numbers, knowing people won't believe it. And so, I'll, so it's not lying. It's just I'll go with, the, and then people accuse me of exaggerating. And generally, it's the opposite. But yes, I've seen those numbers, sir. What type of greedy person are you? You want to keep, you want to keep 28 percent of your money? Uh, I mean, it's not enough that serfs only paid 10 percent in ancient Europe, and you're paying 70 plus. What type of sicko are you, John? Well, that's why. That's why it's not funny, party. man. Are you a racist? Because not wanting government-run health care is racist. I mean. Well, uh, you know, all of that's just ridiculous. No, I know it doesn't make sense, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, make your point, and then Bob will finish. I'm sorry. I'm just talking to somebody who's greedy and hateful. Unique opportunity right now because of this financial crisis, and the only thing that I could think is that we got to band together. we got to stand up against these people. There's not going to be too much of a window of opportunity to ever do this and say, you know what? The federal government's fired. Let's bring everything down to a local level where at least you could show up at some guy's house and, and give him a hard time if he gets out of control. And it, that's it. That's the only thing I could think that would uh, make well, any well sense. Well said. Well, Bob Chapman, final comments on that, uh, my friend. I just want to leave you with one thing. Here are the current European tax rates. UK, 67.5%. France, almost 60 Greece, 65. Spain, 61. Portugal, 62. Sweden, 80. Norway, 79.3. Netherlands, 71. And Denmark, Hold on, we'll go into overdraft. And, and, and again, Bob, I think you're just going with the income tax rates. Yeah, you know, you're not counting the council, you know, the, the, the city, the, you know, the parish, whatever the jurisdiction is, all the telecommunications, fines and fees, the carbon taxes, the travel taxes, uh, the sales taxes, the uh, environmental taxes, the service taxes, the hotel taxes, uh, because the numbers I've seen is uh, from the OECD, the UN complaining, 
that the United States is only a little over 60% of total taxes. And so the world invests here, kind of like Texas, you know, is better in the, in the rest of the U.S. So Glenn Beck's moving here. I mean, is there nothing he doesn't do that uh, to imitate what we're doing? But um, so basically, that's why I was saying France, from the numbers I've seen, is approaching 90% in many tax brackets. Go ahead. Agreed. And the VAT alone will put you up there. And so taxes are prohibitive, and that's the way they're going to get in America. Uh, if you notice the uh, the plan that they're trying to put together uh, to extend the short-term uh, debt uh, limit, uh, they want to raise taxes. And the Republicans are saying, generally speaking, no, we want you to cut back on what you're spending. And they're at a standoff. And what nobody mentions is that between the date that the uh, extension ended and August the 2nd, the federal government will have borrowed about $275 billion to keep the government going during that period of time which they borrowed from the pension plan without informing anybody, so to speak. Well, folks, if you want to get a free copy of hard copy or emailed uh, the latest international forecaster, you can give Midas Resources a call, 800-686-2237, 800-686-2237. Uh, these arrogant people aren't going to stop, Bob, as you know. It's us or them, and we've got to go through the fear. Uh, we've got to face the corruption, as you've done, and we've got to continue to warn people and live to fight another day. And we've got to get people that work for government and the corporate structure to realize that this system's going to destroy them as well and that they that it's a mind trick to tell themselves they're on the winning team when they join with the new world order. Do you agree with that statement? Absolutely. And uh, of course I've been working toward that end for over 50 years. But the real point here when we talk about it in each broadcast, we are gaining on them. We are strong. We are breathing down their collar. We are making great gains, and that's why we're attacked all the time. And so we're going to keep doing what we're doing, and we need your help out there supporting Alex and also spreading the word. I know that you're going to get rejected 99 out of 100 people that you talk to, but do it anyway. Absolutely, folks, and they're trying to censor the web and InfoWars and others for a reason. We're effective. God bless you, Lord willing. We'll see you next Friday, Bob. You got it. Bye-bye, everyone. You bet.